Hello and welcome to our webinar, Migration from ESX to KVM to Save License Costs. I'm Candide Bicono, CEO of OpenCurem Enterprise. I'll hand over to our founder of the company, Matt Reschenburg, to take you through the presentation and give you a live demo of the system. Welcome to this webinar. This is Matt Reschenburg. I will guide you through the simple migration from ESX to KVM. E6 is a very popular uh, virtualization technology such as KVM2. There are differences between both where most people think it's hard to migrate from one to another, but it isn't, and this is what we show in this webinar on an example with KVM managed by OpenQRM. There are several reasons. One is to save license cost for uh, VMware, depending on what features one need. There are several places where cost can be decreased. The second is to gain more flexibility with a completely open source virtualization platform, which is KVM. It's, as you may know, part of the Linux kernel, and there's great support from the Linux community for it. And we also have, since a longer time, the KVM plugin and virtualization type fully supported in OpenQRM. So this makes it easier for you to manage virtual machines with open source software instead of commercial. The third one is to escape window locks because this is combined with, a, with the first reason to save license cost. And the flexibility you get is also on the cost saving side. So the general uh, total cost of ownership can be decreased very much with this migration without losing any functionality, of course. Here we compare VMware versus KVM from the technical part. So first, there is the virtual machine disk where VMware provides a commercial proprietary disk format, the VMDK. <coughs> Compared to KVM, there are lots of different options to store virtual machine disk in different formats. So it's fully up to you and preferences and uh, regarding the preferences and requirements, uh, what kind of storage options you choose for KVM. It starts from simple NAS-based shared storage or SAN or an iSCSI target, which is connected to a KVM host for logical volume deployment, which gives a lot of flexibility within the device layer, up to the options to use Ceph or ClusterFS as distributed or cluster file systems for shared disk storage for virtual machine disk. What you get with VMware, of course, if you're using a vCenter, is a complete data center management for all your virtual machines. That means they are basically all VMware virtual machines and can be managed in full functionality with the vCenter management. We have built with OpenQRM something comparable, but which is not limited only to one virtualization type, uh, such as VMware, but open to other virtualization types like KVM, Citrix Xen Server, uh, Xen Open Source Xen, up to container deployment with OpenVZ, Docker, plus hybrid cloud options with Amazon EC2 and uh, Azure as a new feature with OpenStack as integra uh, integratable uh, technology. So there's a lot of functionality <coughs> within OpenQM Enterprise platform. This is comparable to the functionality of uh, vCenter, but as I said, not limited to virtual machine types or not even limited to virtual machines because there are lots of bare metal deployment systems inside OpenQRM available. We go on with license cost for KVM. Basically, it's completely open source. It runs on any mainstream Linux distribution of your choice, and you've got a lot of flexibility. Some things which we need to take a bit care of, the client integration for VMware, for example, is made for Linux and Windows and supports a virtual desktop mouse support, enhanced graphics support, uh, virtual network cards, and so on, and uh, acceleration of the virtual machine in itself. The same basically is available for KVM on behalf of the virtual IO drivers, which are also available for Linux, which are mostly built in in the Linux distribution uh, already. Uh, and also for Windows machines, which makes Windows machines a lot, lot faster on KVM than uh, if you run it without it. Plus, we have the OpenQM client, which is also available for Linux and Windows. So this enables further management features in the virtual machine operating system, for example, like network assignment, monitoring, statistics, remote console, and so on. Things are quite comparable. The only thing we actually need to do is to move our virtual machine from VMware ESX host to a KVM host. 
One thing to add about uh, professional support, um, for many people or for many companies of any size, it's very important to have some professional support in case of something goes wrong in the data center. This is completely understandable, so we offer on behalf of the Open Cube Enterprise GmbH professional support for all the support visualization types plus the Open Cube platform itself, of course. No need to worry about that. What we will do now is show how easy it is to move our virtual machine from VMware into OpenQRM based on a KVM virtualization type. I installed and pre-configured OpenQRM server. We use one of our QA department here. According to the KVM how-to, which is available on the OpenQRM Enterprise documentation section. This sets up a single system proof of concept set up with KVM installed, so the OpenCAM server will act as the KVM host itself, while in general it's designed as a distributed architecture to also manage remote hosts and storages and the virtual machines on it. I will quickly go over this list and then actually do a quick live demonstration of this migration part. So the first thing will be set up OpenQM. The second thing, mount the VMware data store where the VM VMDK virtual machine disk images are located on the KVM host. Third is converting it to a raw block file image. Then we can push it into an LVM volume, which is pre-created in OpenQM. And from this image, the LVM volume in OpenCAM, which we created, we can simply create a new KVM virtual machine started and later on install the OpenCAM client for further management. So these are the two console commands which we need. I will now show you the converting part. So, this is the console. so we are here actually on the, on the OpenCAM server itself, which acts as a KVM host. The uh, VMware data store, which we are using, is... Just a moment. It is here, um, and we will use VM Debian, uh, which is a standard uh, virtual machine made by VMware. And I prepared a small script which converts the VMDK to a block file and then writes the block file to a logical volume. So actually, the first thing what we need to do here is to create the logical volume in OpenQM before we run this. You should see now our uh, OpenQM server, which we're using for this migration part. And the first thing we, we do is we go to the list of KVM hosts and create a new virtual machine logical volume where we fill in the converted VMDK of VMware. So this is the volume group we want to use. There are already several existing logical volumes, so we create a new one here. Um, it's 2048 to gigabyte, and we name it my VM. Okay. So this will create a completely empty new logical volume on our uh, server, which uh, I will show you now. I'm switching now to the console again. Here we go. I show you now the logical volume display. What we have just created now is this logical volume on the LVOLTS volume group. So the next thing is we can now run the QAMO image converting part and the uh, writing the image to the logical volume we just pre-created. I will just run the script now. Uh, so this can be run in a, in a batch cycle to convert like a 10 or a 50 virtual machine on block. It won't take so much long, so long time. It's just a small image of two gigabyte and we have to just wait a bit until the, it's converted and written to the logical volume. And meanwhile, I will, well, it's one part is already done. I will just wait for it. So this is done actually a bit small. Let's quickly fix this. I will quickly recreate it a bit bigger uh, so it actually fits. Uh, so I made it a bit bigger. Let's run the script again. So it's converting is done. It's now writing to the LVM volume. And it's finished. So the next thing is actually creating a certain new server for the migrated virtual machine image. And we name it the same way. 
we create a new virtual machine now for it. On the same host, we save the image. Okay. Here we can choose a new created virtual machine for the server deployment, and we are selecting our converted image. To finalize the, the server within OpenQRM, which is an abstraction for the virtual machine combined with the image and a few additional parameters. This is what we created here. And this we can simply start to actually bring up the virtual machine which was a virtual machine, uh, a VMware virtual machine before. So it's now starting. We can see then the transition button here. Takes a short while. And we can see with the virtual machine, virtual machine controller, all this thing is booting. Good. OK, that was it so far. Many thanks for your attention. So thank you very much for taking part. This was a short demonstration on the uh, migration ESXi to KVM. We'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Just send us an email. We'll be happy to get back to you. And have a great day still.